Ladies and gentlemen, we are here live with Sim Lund, who is definitely rock star status in the biohacking scene. Uh, 26 years old, author of seven books, each of them about uh, this fat. Uh, he, he is working on reducing the font sizes uh, <laughs> and has become an expert on the, the human metabolism, really understanding how the pathways work, um, and is here talking about resilience, or as we prefer to, to discuss it, uh, anti-fragility. We'll, we'll get into that. But first of all, you know, in terms of resilience, in terms of stress, hormesis, how do you think about these things? Mm. Well, I think it's uh, essential for just surviving the chaotic nature of <laughs> the world. So, like, w w one of the things that we can be sure of is that, you know, uncertainty is out there, bad things are going to happen, and uh, we can't really do much about it. Uh, we can only control our own uh, responses to those things. And uh, one of the ways of preparing for these negative events in advance is to just practice, you know, becoming stronger by stress and uh, practicing this uh, these hormetic activities that uh, strengthen our body and uh, strengthen our mind, keep us healthy and uh, yeah, more uh, resilient against the stress. Okay, so so your your body of work, the the real message that you're trying to share with people is understand about stress and use it to your advantage. Yeah, yeah, exactly. Like you know, there is a misconception about stress that it's only bad <laughs> that you want to avoid it. Uh, but well, the truth is that you know, of course, uh, too much stress can be bad. Chronic stress is. Uh, associated with many diseases, but there can also be, you know, uh, uh, you know, silver lining. It ca can be a positive thing. Uh, so uh, it matters only, like you know, the amount of stress you experience, when you experience it, and how are you able to recover from it, or whether at all. So everything has this. Um, everything has its benefits and its negatives, and everything has the right dose of something. Like too much exercise can be bad, but too little exercise is also definitely harmful. So you have to find. What's the optimal amount of that stress, and how do you recover from it faster, and um, yeah, not not be wiped out from it? Okay, so so uh, one of the core principles that you're just talking about is finding the balance between not enough and not too much. Yes, that's one of the principles. Yeah. What What are the other core principles? Um, well, I would say that maybe the principle would be that you always. You can't like expect to run a marathon if you haven't tra trained for it uh, before. Uh, you could try, but you're gonna experience a whole more negative side effects um, compared to if you have like practiced or trained for it in advance. Mm -hmm. So maybe there is stress is always like subjective. Um, something that is harmful for let's say um, someone let's, who has practiced a lot of exercise or who has you know built up the stress resilience is something harmful for them. Um, may not, is, is definitely going to be much more harmful for someone who is not used to the stress. So everyone has the level of stress, uh, resilience and adaptation. Mm -hmm. And uh, it's a matter of the individual or the subjective uh, person who is experiencing the stress. Yeah, and so uh, the way to understand your own stress level is to just be self-aware and feel it. Do you have any uh, techniques for knowing what is the, find, finding the right balance? Uh, well, of course, um, there are some biomarkers that you can look at, you know, uh, all these comorbidities and uh, you know elevated blood sugar, hypertension, cardiovascular disease, those can be the signs of uh, too much stress, uh, especially. And but at the same time, um, you're more predisposed to getting those uh, comorbidities as well if you're experiencing uh, not enough of these beneficial stressors, like uh, because like exercise is of course one of the best uh, known ways of reducing your risk of all diseases and mm -hmm. being just healthier. Uh, so we can go uh, both ways, uh, but generally I would look at just your own physiological biomarkers and you know, maybe like the easiest thing to track uh, on a daily basis is like the heart rate variability. Mm -hmm. you know, that's a good example of indicating the state of your nervous system. If your heart rate variability is high, then you're recovered, you're able to you know, experience more stress, whereas if your heart rate variability is low, then your stress resilience is uh, also lower mm -hmm. and you're vulnerable, so to say. Nice. Nice. So, uh, so you know that would, I guess, be via the Aura Ring, uh, a very familiar brand in the uh, biohacking circles. Yes. Um, any other important uh, uh, fundamentals about uh, stress? Yeah, we talked about it uh, before as well. That uh, there's a uh, every well, we talk about stress resilience and uh, like this uh, ability to deal with stress, but we uh, of, uh, often not talk about like. Um, Antifragility. So antifragility is uh, the ability to gain from uh, stress, whereas fragility, being fragile, is that you're not able to tolerate any stress at all. You're going to break into pieces uh, immediately when you experience some uh, pressure or tension. 
uh, but anti-fragile things, they grow, they get stronger from it. Uh, and, and a resilient thing, by definition, has no effect on yes. stress. Yeah, and uh, Nassim Nicholas Taleb talks about it in his book as well, that the resilient things are indifferent towards the stress. They don't really... They don't get stronger. <laughs> they don't get stronger, they don't yeah. get weaker, they're just, you know, indifferent. But and, and for the audience, Nassim Taleb fits into my uh, uh, list of people who should be remembered in 1,000 years, which is <laughs> yes. a very short list. So if sure. you haven't come across his work, uh, I, I personally recommend it. Uh, it's good to hear you, you're you recommending it. Also a fellow Lebanese, by the way. Yeah. Um, okay, so yeah, so the, the concept of anti-fragility uh, is the exact definition of something which gets stronger by stress. Yes. And we're talking stress from exercise, stressing your muscles, your, yeah. uh, your, your physical system, uh, stress from fasting, from yeah. stressing your uh, yeah yeah another uh, is examples can be like heat stress saunas yes uh, cold cold stress but also like you know all the psychological stress uh, you're not you don't get anxious you don't lose your uh, grip your grip on things and you you have a pretty like a large great way of uh, dealing with like chaotic environments you stay calm when the ish it's the fan <laughs> yes and uh you know the, the way i like to think about that uh is getting outside of your comfort zone yeah if you're inside your comfort zone you're not stressing yourself get out of your comfort zone don't go too far out that's when For you sure. get into the panic zone yeah it's also about flow states uh yeah like i would imagine like because like flow states happen when you are maybe encountering some uh, difficult situations like you know Skateboarders, they mm -hmm. get into the flow state, uh, Navy SEALs or like warriors, and uh, they do uh, experience flow states. And it may help you to kind of navigate the stressful event uh, better. Uh, but yeah, being in a flow state necessarily doesn't have like a, you know, it doesn't affect the stress response system that well. Mm -hmm. But it may be in a way that if you enjoy the thing that you're doing, even if it is stressful, then you experience less of the negative side effects from it. Like if you enjoy taking a sauna, then it's not going to be harmful for you. Mm -hmm. um, uh, whereas if you like start to panic <laughs> inside the sauna, oh man, this is this is too much. This is too much heat. Then uh, you may actually just freak out. You're you're not experiencing the harm from the sauna. You're experiencing the harm from the way you react to the sauna, like the panic and the mm -hmm. mindset about it. And nice. Hans Salje is one of the um, like stress founding fathers of stress uh, science. Who is Hans Salje? Okay, like from the previous century, and uh, he has a quote like. It's not stress that kills us; it's our response to the stress that does. Nice. So it's always like we, we, we tend to, tend to make things worse <laughs> for ourselves if we overreact to the stress or if we panic and lose our uh, control. And and that's uh, for me. It sounds like a pretty easy mindset shift. Enjoy, yeah. Enjoy the stress. Learn to yeah. you know you thrive can, on like it. What what I found the most beneficial impact come from is to remind ourselves that it can make me stronger it, mm -hmm. it can it, i can leverage this hormesis and anti-fragility and that uh, i can get it get stronger from it whereas if you think that it, this stress is uh you know making me age faster <laughs> it's making me lose my some somehow like this healthy functioning of the body then then of course you're gonna think about it that it's harmful and you want to avoid it as much as possible whereas if you know that it can be positive it can be beneficial then you have an entire different approach towards life. You're not trying to conserve. You're not trying to avoid discomfort. You're, um, you're seeking e it. Not yeah, maybe <laughs> not necessarily. You could uh, definitely seek it, but at least you're not uh, freaking out mm -hmm. about it when it does happen. Mm -hmm. And that's especially relevant for the uh, more anxious people out there. For sure. Okay, like I think we're in the uh, downward stretch of the interview. Tell us about this uh, documentary that you're working on. Yeah, um, we've been uh, working on with about like just stress and hormesis uh, generally how do you uh, get stronger by stress and uh, especially use these different biohacking methods to do so mm -hmm. and uh, yeah it's hopefully it will reach a wide audience and uh, yeah i've been work working on it for um, maybe like a few months already and it's uh, so What's far it's it called uh, it's probably going to be stronger by stress uh, but stronger with stress stronger by stress uh, stronger by stress yeah, very, uh, nice, but very nice it's not final it's yeah. not concluded yet. work in progress yeah keep following simland for uh, updates on that, I'm sure we'll, we'll be kept updated. And, uh, you know, in wrapping up, uh, one thing I like to ask people is, what is the most powerful idea you would want to share with our audience? If you had to choose one, no pressure. Yeah. Uh, hmm. I think I'll, I'll take the one that I finished my presentation with as always by Sun Tzu. He said, uh, it is better to be a warrior in a garden than a gardener in a war. So it basically means that 
like you know this war or cha chaotic events stressful events they're gonna happen anyway and if you are a gardener in your life then you're not really prepared for the war whereas if you're even in your everyday life you are a warrior like you're training your stress adaptation you're exposing yourself to different stressors uh even like you know the physical stress but also like the mental stress you're not living a very like safe uh, life all the time you're engaged like proactively in the stress of life then uh, you will also just be more able to deal with uh, the actual stress in uh, when it does happen like some chaos beautiful okay uh, just before we cut out could you just repeat that one more time the uh, quote yeah the entire quote yeah no, okay. just the, yeah just the uh yeah it's better uh, to be it is better to be a warrior in a garden than a gardener in a war. Thank you. Thank you, Sim. And cut.